what we're standing in right now is the Invertebrate Paleontology Collections um, at Cincinnati Museum Center. This collection here is about 400 to 500,000 specimens strong. It is the world's largest upper order division invertebrate paleontology collection. It focuses mainly on an interval of time between 451 to 444 million years ago, known as the Upper Ordovician, which the Cincinnati, Ohio area is famous for. In fact, the rocks in Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky are world famous because of the number of species that we have here and their preservation. And the trilobites are an excellent example of some of these most amazing fossils. Uh, I'm holding in my hand right now a trilobite known as flexicalamine. Uh, many of you may be familiar with this little guy because he's one of the um, highlights of one of the fossils that most people want to try to collect in the area. He is a trilobite. Trilobites are a class of arthropod that are now extinct. They died out 250 million years ago with the largest mass extinction event to hit um, Earth where 95% of all marine life went extinct. So it was a real doozy. <laughs> and, uh, and they're not related to anything arthropod that we have today. They left no descendants at all. So even when we think of other arthropods like crabs and lobsters and uh, insects and so forth, well, they are related because they are arthropods. They did not evolve from this particular class of arthropod. And if there was some sort of adverse environmental conditions, maybe there was a mud flow that would ultimately bury and preserve these specimens, and the trilobite wanted to protect its gills so that it wasn't going to be suffocated by that mud, it would roll up. Unfortunately for them, it didn't work. Fortunately for us, it did work, and we now have our fossil. This is an example of a trilobite, or at least it's part of one, um, called Isotelis, which is the Ohio State fossil, and there is a complete large specimen on display in the Natural History Museum right now. This is only half of him, and he's actually missing the upper part of his head. This would be the eye region right here, so he probably would be about this large. This is an example of one of the largest trilobites that we have. In fact, the largest trilobite on Earth is an isotelus specimen as well from Canada at about 85 centimeters long. Another arthropod that we're actually fairly famous for around here in the Cincinnati area is a type of organism known as a Eurypterid. Uh, you may have heard of them as sea scorpions. They are marine scorpions. Um, today, all scorpions that we have are terrestrial, uh, but these guys lived in the ocean. And um, the particular specimen that we are famous for is known as Megalograptus ohioensis, um, obviously Ohio being where it's from. Um, this is an appendage off of Megalograptus, the third appendage actually. So you can see that it is an arthropod because it's jointed, which is characteristic of arthropods. They have jointed appendages. You can see that it has these spikes that come off of the appendage and that it's actually a quite large appendage off of what could have been potentially a very large specimen. Because we are talking about arthropods, we can't help but also talk about insects. Um, insects have been around actually for a very long time as a group, uh, as a class. They were some of the first life um, animal life actually on land. There are a variety of ways that insects typically tend to get fossilized. One of the more famous ways that insects get fossilized, and in fact a very important component of the insect fossil record and how we know so much about them, is through amber. This is an example here, can you see that there? Um, of what looks to be like a little fossilized uh, wasp or a bee of some sort. This is the Eocene Green River Formation out of Colorado. It is a deposit of lake sediments that are very, very fine-grained sediments that help to preserve fossils. This here is an example of a fossil wasp from the Green River Formation. And also we have here an example of a fossil cricket. So here we have another example of a beetle from the La Brea Tar Pits. This is the ventral or undersurface, and you can see a limb coming out there, and you can see the limb with all the little hairs on the limb, and you can see that the exoskeleton is still fairly shiny, almost as if this specimen just died yesterday.